Welcome to Taylor's Tour. Today, we are driving towards Charlotte Pass in Kosciuszko National Park, visiting snowy mountains in summer. The snowy mountains, known informally as the Snowies, is the highest mountain range on the continent of mainland Australia. It contains the highest mountain, Mount Kosciuszko, which reaches to a height of 2,228 meters, 7,310 feet above sea level, which is one of the five highest peaks on the Australian mainland, all of which are above 2,100 meters, 6,890 feet. They are located in southern New South Wales and are part of the larger Australian Alps and Great Dividing Range, experiencing large nature snowfalls every winter. Snow normally falls during June, July, August and early September. The climate station in Charlotte Pass recorded Australia's lowest temperature of minus 23 degree on 28th June 1994. With all four snow resorts in New South Wales being located in the region, it is considered to be one of the centres of the Australian ski industry during the winter months. Most snow lovers come during the winter season year after year. The snow cover starts melting by late spring. It is the first time for us to come here during the summer to see the real beauty of Mount Kosciuszko without the snow. We are excited while driving up the mountains, seeing the scenery changes as we are entering the different altitudes. The higher regions of the park experience an alpine climate, which is unusual on mainland Australia. Part of the mountains known as the Main Range contains mainland Australia's five glaciers lakes. The largest of these lakes is Blue Lake, one of the headwaters of the Snowy River. During the last ice age, which peaked about 20,000 years ago in the Pleistocene epoch, the highest peaks of Main Range near Mount Kosciuszko experienced a climate which favoured the formation of glaciers, evidence of which can still be seen today. This is the famous Parisian Ski Resort, which is the furthest our car can get in winter. Although the last glaciers period ended more than 8,000 years ago, its effects can still be felt today. For example, the moving ice carved out the landscape we see today, and the frost heaves, a significant agent of soil erosion, is still effective in Kosciuszko area. We arrived at the Charlotte Pass and will start a four-hour walk to Blue Lake and back. This is one of the best hiking trails in Australia. In this region, it can snow at any time of the year, and under deep snow, we won't be able to see the trail. Today, we are blessed with the beautiful weather. The air is super clean with amazing visibility, which you can probably tell from my photos and videos. We love this beautiful part of the world and care about the environment which drive me to find out what caused the ice age? Will it come back again? How does it impact our lives? According to scientists, if we do believe them, an ice age is a long period of reduction in the temperature of the Earth's surface and atmosphere, resulting in the presence or expansion of continental and polar ice sheets and alpine glaciers. Earth climates alternate between ice ages and greenhouse periods, during which there are no glaciers on the planet. Earth is currently in quaternary glaciation, 
known in popular terminology as the Ice Age. Individual poses of cold climate within an ice age are termed glacial periods, and intermittent warm periods within an ice age are called interglacials. The current geological period, the Quaternary, which began about 2.6 million years ago and extends into the present, is marked by warm and cold episodes, cold phases called glaciers, lasting about 100,000 years, which are then interrupted by the warmer interglacials, which lasted about 10 to 15,000 years. The last cold episode of the last glacial period ended about 10,000 years ago. Earth is currently in an interglacial period of the Quaternary, called the Holocene. There have been at least five major ice ages in the Earth's history. They are Huronian, Cryogenian, Andean Saharan, Late Paleozoic, and the latest Quaternary Ice Age. Outside these ages, the Earth seemed to have been ice-free even in high latitudes. The causes of ice ages are not fully understood for either the large-scale ice age periods or the small ebb and flow of glacier interglacial periods within an ice age. The consensus is that several factors are important. One, changes in the Earth's orbit around the Sun, known as the Milankovitch cycles, which are periodic changes in the Earth's orbit and the tilt of the Earth's rotation axis. Two, the motion of tectonic plates resulting in changes in the relative location and the amount of continental and oceanic crust on the Earth's surface which affect wind and ocean currents. Three, variations in solar output. Four, the orbital dynamics of the Earth-Moon system. Five, the impact of the relatively large meteorites and volcanism, including eruption of supervolcanoes. Six, atmospheric composition such as the concentrations of carbon dioxide and methane. Some of these factors influence each other. There is evidence that greenhouse gas levels fell at the start of ice ages and rose during the retreat of ice sheets, but it is difficult to establish the cause and effect. Greenhouse gas levels might also have been affected by other factors which have been proposed as causes of ice ages, such as the movement of continents and volcanism. Researchers use data on Earth's orbit to find the historical warm interglacial period that looks most like the current one, and from this have predicted that the next ice age would usually begin within 1,500 years. The amount of heat-trapping gases emitted into Earth's oceans and atmosphere is predicted to prevent the next glacial period, which otherwise would begin in around 50,000 years, and likely more glacier cycles. During glaciation, water was taken from the oceans to form the ice at high latitudes. Thus, global sea level dropped by about 110 meters, exposing the continental shelves and forming land bridges between land masses for animals to migrate. During Deglaciation, the melted ice water returned to the oceans, causing sea level to rise. The Earth has been alternating between long ice ages 
and shorter interglacial periods for around 2.6 million years. For the last million years or so, these have been happening roughly every 100,000 years. Around 90,000 years of ice age, followed by a roughly 10,000 year interglacial warm period, otherwise known as greenhouse period. During this period, more ocean water is provided for abundant marine life. More land is available for plants, which grow better by taking in more carbon dioxide and convert into oxygen, which is needed by humans and animals. An ice age is a time where a significant amount of Earth's water is locked up on land in continental glaciers. During the last ice age, which finished about 12,000 years ago, enormous ice masses covered huge swaths of land now inhabited by millions of people. During ice age, there is evidence that ocean circulation patterns are disrupted by glaciations. Much of the land on Earth will be uninhabitable. Much of the water on Earth will be frozen. Earth will experience a long, long period of drought and the exposed land will be sanctified. Just like in last glacial period, two-thirds of Australia were covered by sand. This blue lake is a piece of evidence which formed by glaciers more than 10,000 years ago. During an ice age, humans and animals will experience very harsh conditions. If we can survive through it, most definitely many species of animals and plants will be extinguished just like they would have in the last ice age. Would you rather live in this interglacial warmer period or an icy glacial period? Well, I think the answer is clear. But don't just take my word for it. Do your own research and you'll find that climate change, global warming these days are scams for political and financial purposes. Some politicians and mainstream media have a habit of over-exaggerating threats. They hijack the term environmental protection to mislead us. They certainly have misled some kids who don't like to go to school to learn about real science. Or are school these days not teaching nature science but teaching anti-nature stuff instead? Has our young generation been poisoned with Marxism and political correctness? Where will our society be heading? Please let us know your thoughts by leaving your comments.
Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give a thumb up and share it to others. Please subscribe to our channel and press bell for more. We thank you for your great support.